the farm focused presentation webinar that we have today. We're really excited to be here with you. Unfortunately, we would have far rather been in person with you. Um, it's much better. And also, I would have done my health and safety um, my health and safety rules that I have here. But I know you all know where your bathroom is and you all know your exit sign, so I won't need to go through that. Um, but what I will do is ask everybody, if you wouldn't mind, just so I know you can hear me and you know how to use the chat, can you just say hi in the chat um, so I know you're hearing and you can use that chat because we will be using the chat later in our Q&A. Great. Thanks, Mel. Perfect. Thanks, Jane, Helen, Christine, and Amanda, Brenda, and Grant, Brittany. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Heather. Thanks, Paulette. Hi. Awesome. I know we've got a few more people coming on board, but um, they will. Uh, we'll let them join us when they're ready. All right. Let's move on. Again, thank you so much for coming uh, onto our webinar today. My name is Katrina McClelland, um, and I have spent the last 20 years working with hundreds of uh, companies, both here in New Zealand and international. In the last eight years, I've spent a lot of time uh, regularly visiting China and their innovative um, researching their technologies over there. And it's with great pleasure that I am working now with Farm Focus here in the heartland and rural community of Masterton. Um, Farm Focus is most certainly a world-class application. So, um, working with world-class team members, and it's very exciting to be here today. Um, we shared with you earlier this month that we have changed our name and we have rebranded. You might see behind me um, our new logo, Farm Focus, supporting farmers for over 40 years. Um, we are one company and one brand name, so we are no longer CRS Software. We are Farm Focus, and we are no longer Cash Manager Focus. We are Farm Focus, one product, one brand, which is excellent. Um, many of you will be familiar with our very much loved product, Cash Manager Rural, which for more than two decades has been a great tool for farmers. However, being an innovative technology company, it's really important for us to be moving on and working with our farmers so they learn about new technologies as well. We've taken advantage of these new technologies and hence the reason we've created Farm Focus. So Farm Focus is completely new. It's completely cloud-based. It can be used on any computer, anywhere, any device. So I, I believe Rural wasn't being able to use it on Mac, but you can certainly use it on a Mac now. Yay. It is multi-user, and it has excellent privacy and security ratings. In all respects, again, it is world-class. So over the next hour or so, 40 to 50 minutes, we're going to share with you workflows that will reduce your typing and provide better and more timely information. We're also going to demonstrate that the new software is reassuringly familiar. I think that's really important for many of you, uh, for many of our farmers, that the transfer over from rule to focus is familiar in you, and there's some things in there that you'll recognise. But let me introduce to you two people who are in the room with me right now that you can't see. Our first one is Juliet Allen. Come on up, Juliet. Afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm the product education lead here at Farm Focus. Um, my background's in sheep and beef farming here in the Wairapa and also spent the last 12 years in rural banking. Awesome. We have, it's fantastic having Juliet on board. <laughs> Juliet, as she just said, 12 years of that banking industry, she brings that knowledge into Farm Focus that's really valuable for us. And we won't forget our Taranaki boy, Craig. Come on up, Craig. Yeah, guys, I'm Craig. So I've uh, been here the last few years working in the development team, uh, writing the code that uh, makes this app run. Uh, previously to that, I had a um, background in dairying, uh, milking, um, milking a herd of 200 jerseys in coastal Taranaki. Awesome. Thanks, Craig. So it's great to have Craig on board, obviously, here as well. He's, a, as he said, he's a dairy farmer, both, both coming from the farm, farming industry, which is great. Um, so thanks, guys. I know you can't see them, but Julia and Craig will be introducing the product to you shortly. So our goal here today is to reassure you that switching farm focus is right for you. Um, if you have a pen and a paper, uh, piece of paper, please keep your, write your questions down. And right at the end, we're going to do a little bit of a Q&A. We'll ask Juliet and Craig to come up as well. So we'll answer any questions. So at the end of this presentation, you will be going, yes, where do I switch? That's our goal here today. 
So our next present, uh, our next uh, frame here, you can see supporting farmers for over 40 years. So what is Farm Focus in a nutshell? Farm Focus is easy to use, time-saving financial management software that provides a big picture view of farm performance and profitability for you and your team. And when we talk about the team, we're talking about your accountant, we're talking about your better half, we're talking about the banker and your consultant. With Farm Focus, you will work smarter, not harder, and that is a guarantee. Having the confidence to make the right calls so that you can grow your business and do more of what you like. Who doesn't want to do more of what they like? Thanks, Craig. Let's move over to the next one. Okay, this is a great image, not because they're all good-looking people, but this is our, our team here. We all have our roots deep in the rural community, and I think that's really important when you're creating something for farmers. You need to understand the farming community. Um, it's definitely one of our strengths, and as I said earlier, we are based here in rural Masterton. We're a group of passionate professionals. Seriously, these people here are really passionate about helping farmers. And as, we, as you noticed before, we've got two other farmers in the room. Um, whether in customer support, product development, marketing, sales or management, you'll find the majority of our team really do have strong roots in farming, with, at least with, roots, uh, with links to the farming community. Um, so when I very first started with Farm Focus, I um, chatted to everybody who were here. I wanted to know who had, the, who had information about farming, who really understood the farming community. And, and when we talked about the, the product itself and the app itself and how we're going to help farmers grow, we really got a good understanding that farmers really are at the heart of this business. It this, this, uh, really is the, their passion. So how are we going to get that across to farmers to understand that we are with you? Along the way, we created a brand story video that we're really excited about. We asked our customers to come on board and help us make this um, video. Let's play it now, Craig. Thanks. <laughs> In the 1980s, when Farm Focus started out, our little slice of South Pacific paradise was a very different place. It was a bit more straightforward. If you needed something fixed, you could more or less do it yourself. Technology has always moved forward, as have the needs of farmers. Tractors started out with pretty basic functions, but add in hydraulics and a multitude of additional tools right through to GPS, and it's hard to imagine going back. There have always been uncertainties. The weather, fluctuating markets, whatever we've had to face, we've always looked forward so we don't get caught in the storm. Some things were the same. We still had to get out the door and do a day's work. There was always something to do, but time on the farm has always been the priority. Crops and stock won't wait. We had family to look after. That girl's got a head in the clouds. Maybe the clouds the future. In the middle of shearing, Brian, who would become our CEO in 2002, was taking a technical call when an idea came to him. Hello. Did you remember to leave the mouse on the table this time? You didn't take it off the table? Uh, hold on. Years later, by the time Brian became Wire Rapper Farmer of the Year, he had realised most of the farmers he was talking to seemed to have to work harder, not smarter, to get things done, when it should be the other way. He wanted Farm Focus to be part of that change. Brian, Ian and David got together. On the farm, they reckoned, what if our community wasn't just our neighbours? What if it was all the farmers who shared the same challenges and were looking for the same solutions to free up time? to take away the paperwork and to make it easier for the banks and accountants buying themselves some time to plan for the future. What if their community was any farmer with a farm focus who wanted to innovate and make farm specific decisions with farm specific tools? At Farm Focus, we know about this stuff because we're farmers too. Our livelihoods and the well-being of our families and communities depend on us working together. Farm Focus is designed to serve the farmers who want to manage risks better and work smarter through a truly integrated cloud-based farm management system, second to none, run by rural Kiwis who understand what it means to pull it all together to get it done. 
Ultimately, Farm Focus works to make more time available for our hard-working farmers to do more of what they like. We've been supporting and innovating with farmers for over 40 years, with another 40 to come and the rest. Farm Focus, proud supporters of farmers. We can play it again. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. That always gives me a little bit of a shiver. We, um, uh, it was funny doing that video, actually. Everybody in there in that video is, a, is one of our clients who um, volunteered to be in our video, which is great. They're all using Farm Focus. Apart from one of them was an actor, and that was our Not Our Real Brian. We lined them all up on the wall when we decided who was going to take the, uh, not, the real, not the Real Brian from 30 years ago. And funny story with that video as well, um, that was a true story. Uh, Brian was telling us a um, great story about him. Um, having to working on the farm and having the phone call and the ladies talking about not being able to um, lift up her mouse and uh, use her computer. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Um, just on an offside, Brian still is certainly involved. I'm sure a lot of you already know Brian. He's um, involved in, the, in uh, not just the community, but here at Farm Focus, which is great. A real passion, passionate drive from the top, which is great. So um, as you heard from there, um, 40 years, we have been around for 40 years, it's our 40th um, anniversary um, this year. And during those last 40 years, we've evolved through various iterations of Cash Manager, a trusted platform that has been supported by many of you farmers. And just now I want to give you a, a thank you because um, you have been supporting us through this time. Um, a lot of you I know have been 30, 40 years with us that whole time. So we want to thank you for that. But now we are focusing on farm focus. It's a single-minded focus on the product that delivers leading financial management software, especially for you farmers. So next uh, thing. Before we start the demonstration, I know you're dying to have a look at farm focus itself. But before, I just want to talk you through our paperless workflow. I think this is really important to understand the automation. This is where we are giving you back that time so you can do more of you what you like. Um, it is all automated. It would be really easy to transfer your all your data from Rural and bring it over to Focus and just carry on the way you used to do Rural, um, bringing down your CSV files and manually putting things in. But this is really automated. We want you to be able to take it up right from the start of the way that we're actually presenting it here and the rich features that we have. We want you to use it in this way to give you back that time. So. Just a little walk through with this paperless workflow. Imagine that you're waking up in the morning in this beautiful country that we call New Zealand that we do every morning and you're opening up Farm Focus and sitting there in your needs action screen is all your latest invoices. They're already sitting there from farmlands, from farm source, from the accountant, from pay source, if you're using that integration for, for payroll. Um, in fact, any invoice that from any supplier is sitting there already. In fact, not only is it just sitting there, all that rich data has come down into that needs action screen. Everything is already code, coded. They're all line, um, itemized and lined completely separately. And you've also got tags sitting there as well. All you have to do now is um, push the match, match button and, and you're off. It really is automated. Not only that, but maybe your accountant just called you or your banker or your consultant and they need a copy of that invoice. Well, there it is straight away attached to that transaction. Um, that's all automated and um, the lovely Juliet and Craig will be telling you a little bit more about that. So, so I'm just going to ask them to, well, actually, you might as well come up now. <laughs> and let's just have a chat about how that actually works. Thank you, Juliet. Well, thanks. Thanks, Katrina. Um, so soon we will take a look into Farm Focus, but before we get in there, um, we will just take you through some of those key changes. A lot of it will look very familiar to you and what you're used to in rural, um, but we'll be talking mainly today about those improvements. We've got plenty of training material available on our help centre, on our website, and of course with our support team here. Um, for this presentation, we'll be using some demonstration data, but when you come across to focus, it'll be your codes and your data coming with you. You'll be familiar with the bank transactions that are in rural, but now we have also introduced invoices. So why invoices? There are quite a few reasons for recording invoices in focus, and these are just some of them. So we've got that timely information. As soon as that invoice arrives, it is gone through into focus and it's accurate and um, up to date and you've got that while it's fresh in your mind to code. 
So we've got the rich data, the invoices you receive provide that detailed information from direct from the supplier and it's a source of truth when you're auditing. Um, the automation side of it, of course, so those invoices arriving for you into focus and then a lot of the coding rules that we can set up and the ways we can do that so that they are already coded waiting for you. And then the accuracy. So because that information has come straight from your supplier into focus, there is less chance for human error. So we'll just jump into the, um, the demonstration. Thanks, Craig. So we'll start by just going into our settings. When you migrate across from rural, you'll be prompted to go through all of these settings to set them up according to how you are going to use it. Um, but one of them, the connectors here. So this is all about getting your information into focus. So you'll see here we've got farmlands and farm source um, as direct feeds. If you have these already set up as direct feeds, they will still be active for you. And we've also got pay source there, which is a payroll provider, and that directly integrates with farm focus. And we're working to increase this list all of the time. Something new here, the invoice scanner. So if we just click into that, so you'll see here that everyone's going to get a unique email address for themselves, for their business. And this email you will forward on any invoices to and they will come through to focus for you. So there's a few ways to do that. If you get paper, um, paper invoices still, you can take a photo of those or scan those and forward them through to this address. Or you can set up in your email an auto forwarding rule so that they come directly into focus or just manually forward it yourself. So we'll come through into the needs action screen. This screen here, you'll, you'll be using a lot of the time. This is where all of your bank tra transactions come through and all of your invoices. Um, you'll also see we've got this upload download icon up in the top corner that Carice is showing us. So this is another area where you can get information in and out of focus. You'll see that we've got the supplier invoice option. Which if we just click into that, we've got Farm Source, Rural Co, and PGG. And they are all options that you can import a CSV file and have that information come directly into focus. Um, and all of the different lines and all of the different descriptions and information all sorted for you. Just go back into the needs section. So here you can see all of these invoices. Everything there that's got a paper clip icon on it shows that it's got the invoice attached. So we'll just have a look into one of those. We've got the vet service bill here. Um, so you can see here that all of the lines are split out for you, the quantities, the amounts, uh, all that, that information's done for you. Um, so all the hard work's done just by sending that email. You can see up the top corner, it'll show that the invoice is attached here. So you've always got that source document to go back to. So if you click into that, all of the rich data is here for you. Um, so if you code things or merge everything together and just say, put it to VET, you've got all of that underlying information there still to refer back to. You can also attach any other relevant documents up here. So loan statements, tax certificates, that sort of thing. You can put anything you need to into this area here and it will store that for you. Um, so we'll just jump back into the needs action screen. So now we've got all these invoices into focus and we need to code them. If we go into the fuels bill and we'll code, code this one. So you'll see here, we've got a few different options of how we can code things. Um, you'll see a couple lines that are relating to petrol. If we go out to the side and you see here where Craig hovers over these three little menu dots appear. You'll see these all throughout Farm Focus, and when you click on them, they'll give you the options available of what you can and can't do. In this instance, we will be selecting a new coding rule. So we're going to set up a coding rule for any time that petrol comes in. Um, we can see the other party contains farm fuels. And in this case, we're going to just keep all of that criteria, but you can add or delete criteria depending how specific you want to be. This one we're going to attribute it all to farm fuel and click save. So you'll see that this rule will apply to anything that's got the petrol against it 
and it will apply to this invoice and any future invoices. So that's already coded for you. You can see that there's a couple lines here that are relating to chain oil. So some instances you might not want all of that underlying information. And in that case, you can use the merge function. You select all lines that are applicable, merge them together, and then code it to whatever code you want. Yeah, and we'll just pull that chain oil. And you see it's lumped together the amounts there for you. In other instances, you might want to keep all of that information and all of the description and quantities, but still code everything to the same code. So this is something we call bulk coding. So you can select all the lines that are applicable. So we'll select these two diesel lines and just start typing in the code. And it will apply that across all of those lines. So this is fully coded. We'll click Save now. We'll be back in the Needs Action screen. You can see that that fuel bill is now fully grayed out. So that means it's fully coded and there's nothing further to do until you need to match that with the transaction. These ones that are in bold, they still need some action. So you can be directed to those ones straight away. Um, some of them might be only partially coded or not coded yet. You can code part of an invoice, go away and come back later. So now we'll look at paying our bills. When you go up to that upload download button again, you can see that we've got the option for a bill payment file. If we select on that, that'll help pull up all of our invoices, whether they're coded or not. And you can select which ones you want to pay this month. And as you see, as Craig selected those, it's just keeping a running, running total at the bottom of how much it adds up to. So you might choose not to pay all of them, in this one go, but yeah, we can keep track of how much we're spending. So usually you would download this and then in your online banking, you would upload this file and it would populate all those fields for you. You just need to click pay. We just won't do this today though. Right, so over on our transaction side, so this is where all of your direct fees, if you have them set up, will be coming in. If you have active um, bank feeds in rural, they will come across with you. If you don't and you import a CSV file, that upload download icon again is where you can bring in your bank transaction files. So not all of our transactions have a corresponding invoice for them. So things such as personal expenditure, loan, loan payments, bank fees, that sort of thing, they won't have an invoice for them. And we've got some quick coding features available for these. So if you see here, we've got quite a few lines relating to the shop, and we know that that's all personal expenditure. So we're going to select all of those, and then we'll use the quick coding icon at the top, and we'll code that all to personal. You don't need to remember all of your codes as well. You can just start typing the word, and the codes will come up for you to select from. So we'll just say that was all. <laughs> all of um, our lunch food or something. So I've still got petrol on my head. Yeah, yeah. and we'll, we'll click code and that will deal with all, five, all of those transactions in one go. You'll see um, this icon here, this little purple icon, that are against a couple of the transactions. So this means we've already set up a coding rule. And um, we're happy with that rule and when it appears and through our bank transactions, we can select to run those coding rules. Just at the top there, click on that, run them, and that will code all of those and send them off to the completed screen. So we'll come to that completed screen soon. Right, so now that we've got some coded invoices and some bank trans transactions there, we'll look at matching. If we open up the Farmax one, we can see we've already coded this, um, but now we can match it so by selecting that match button. All of our options will come up here, select the Farmax one and click Save. So that will apply that coding to that transaction and it will send it off to the completed screen. There might be some 
bill that you haven't paid the full invoice through your online banking, such as this tractor repair one here that we've got, 4,300 odd, but we only paid $2,000 against us this month. So when we click to match that one, we can see that we only paid $2,000. We can select that and save. So this will stay in our needs action screen because it's not fully dealt with yet. Um, but if we flag as partially paid and the balance remaining will be shown there. Um, you can match as many invoices to one transaction or many transactions to one invoice if that's applicable. All right, so we'll move into that completed screen now. So when everything's coded and matched and saved, this is where it will go. And now it's all ready for processing in your GST return. So it's, we've got a list of it here available for viewing. You can view by coded line or by the transaction itself. Um, you can also use the filter options along the top of the page, such as by filtering by code to check that all of, all of your coding is consistent. Uh, you've also got the search bar up the top if you're looking for a specific item. So really great to refer back to if you're looking for particular payments. Right, we'll move into the balancing screen. So you'll be familiar with reconciling in rural. This is all now done for you. So this is the balance, balancing screen. You'll see everything that come through, comes through here, all of the bank transactions. We've got our bank balance here and our focus balance. So anything that's not coded yet will mean that it won't match. But once everything's coded, the bank balance and the focus balance will match and you don't need to do anything here. All right, now that we've looked at where all of our actuals are stored, we'll go into our working plan, which is what you'd be familiar with as our revised budget. So you'll see it looks quite familiar with our actuals on the left and our plan on the right. We'll just give it a second to load. We can individually expand or collapse different categories, or you can choose to expand and collapse the whole page with these chevrons. You'll see these on quite a few of your other screens as well. We've got the code list there. So that's a quick way to extend down your categories. We can change the livestock that you will see in the... When we change the livestock, you'll see that the cash flow and livestock view are very similar. They're two different perspectives of the same plan. So they look very similar. They share the same settings across both views. So you're working in the same context um, as opposed to rural when you had to go out and go into the livestock area and then come back into your budget. So we'll enter a livestock sale through the cash flow and you can see how they work together. Um, so for R1 bull, say we have a sale in April of um, 18,000. So we can quickly build up our cash flow by entering in these uh, dollar amounts. Um, and you'll see that this is flagged saying we need to come back later and fill in the details. So this alert here for stock, if we flick into our livestock grid, we'll see that same alert display there telling us to go back and fill in the details. So when we open up the worksheet for this one, we'll see it's a sale in April. There's that orange marker for us to go and enter in those details. And this is where we can add in, um, put in the, the dollars per head, the carcass weight. And you'll see we've also got the option for carcass and live weight here. You can do per, per head or per kilo and add in other notes as well that are applicable. We'll come back to that a bit later. And all right, you'll also see up the top here, if we just scroll back up, Craig, we've got the dairy forecaster here as well. So this is something you'd be used to in rural. You can come into here and quickly plot out your production for the year. And um, if you are with Sinlay, Fonterra or Westland, you can use that button to quickly update the latest forecast prices. 
that's quite similar to rural, but really handy. All right, we'll just um, come out of this one and go to our working plan landing page. So you see here, um, Craig's just using the quote navigation down the side of the, the bar there. Um, so this is how you can navigate quickly around farm focus without having to go into each section to get to where you need to go. So here we're on the landing page for the plan. You'll see our 2021 working plan. So that's where we are currently. We've got our actuals and our budget in there. All of our actuals from these section, once they're completed, they auto populate in here. And we've got our next year's budget forecast for us. So the main budgets will always, always be in a continuum along the top. Below that, we've got our baseline plan. So this is a really handy feature. You can lock down a baseline plan at any time throughout the year. Um, it's really great at the beginning of the year, once you've set your budget for the year, you can lock that down. That can't be altered, and you've got that to refer back to when you're doing variances and comparisons. So a really great thing if you do quarterly updates or bi-monthly updates or monthly um, to refer that back. And then just down the bottom, you'll see we've got a section for drafts. So this is where you can create budgets for whatever proposal that you're looking at, those water scenarios or um, new purchase blocks, that sort of thing. You can have as many draft plans as you like. Um, you can delete them or archive them if they start taking up too much room. All right, so that's a good look at that area. We'll take a bit of a look into our report. So if we just go to the landing page for the report, you'll see here quite a few that you're already familiar with that we haven't rural. We've got the EFS report, the variance, year to date to name a view. We also have the accountant's annual and the export to the GL down the bottom. So this allows your accountant to complete the year end reporting and quickly export your data into their GL. We've added a few new features to some of the reports. So we'll take a look into our cash flow detail report. We just click into there and apply that. So you'll see here that we've got quite a few. If you just go up to the icon at the top, the, the I one that's for viewing, we've got quite a few new options for how you can view this. Um, so you can add or delete as many as you want to view it how you want to view it. So we've included a few additional meat production information that we recorded earlier. As you can see here with the total kilos of carcass weight, total kilos of live weight, etc. there. We'll pop into the livestock trading report and you can see how that also applies. So just like the cash flow detail, we've got this, um, the kilos of carcass weight per head. We've got this meat production information here too now. So we record these weights on the planned items earlier. And we also can convert the carcass weight and live weight for you. And we'll just quickly show you how we do that in your stock code setup. So if we go into the settings and look at the codes, as I mentioned earlier, if your farm codes in rural will come across with you. So these will be all of your own codes when you open up farm codes. So if we just drop down, we look into the back column and look into that R1 bulls that we've been using. Scroll down a little bit there, Craig. So you can see that um, if we just go up a little bit, sorry, <laughs> you can see that we've set this, it's going to age automatically to an R2 bull in the stock rec. Uh, we go down a little bit further, it's breeding status is none, it's a bull. <laughs> um, and down a bit further, we've got this unit of measure here. So you can set it to default to carcass or live weight depending on your stock activity. And there's a yield there as well that we've set but you can alter this if you frequently have a different yield to that. All right. So that's a lot about our reports. We'll just take a quick look at the GST returns as well. Something we all have to do. <laughs> if you click into one of the final ones here, Craig. Thanks. Um, so you'll see that all of this information is populated for you after you've done all of your coding and matching. 
Um, so you can go through and check it, make sure it's right, add any of those adjustments that are applicable for you. You can drop down in the coded lines by using that little arrow, clicking on that. And you can um, filter those lines by code or by GST type to make sure that there's nothing that's been coded incorrectly. So you can have a quick look at those, make sure everything's in the right place. And when you're happy with it and you want to file it with IRD, all you need to do is go down here, down the bottom of the screen and click file with IR. The first time you do this, you'll need to log into your My IR, um, but every subsequent one, it will just, it will take you through. You'll have to click a confirm button and then it'll shoot you back into Plan Focus. So it's all done automatically and securely. Very, very easy. All right, we'll just jump back to the presentation. So what I've taken you through there is just a few of the highlights. We've got a lot more, um, but <laughs> we can't be here all day. Um, but just to reiterate some of those overarching benefits of Farm Focus. So we can be any device, anytime, anywhere. You don't have to be stuck in your office at your, your computer there. We're cloud-based, so sharing data is so much easier with integrating with our suppliers and other users. We've got no more downloading releases. So we do feature releases every sort of four to six weeks here. And that's done seamlessly while you're using Focus. We've got multi-user access. So your accountant, your banker, you, whoever can be all in the same farm at the same time and no more being locked out. And then also you can view one, more than one farm at the same time as well. So have a few tabs open across your computer and um, flip between the different farms easily. All right, I'll be around at the end to answer questions, but we'll hand back to Katrina for now. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Juliet. Um, I know that that was a lot of information to take in. Um, sorry, just bear with me for one second. Um, we understand there was a lot of information, a lot of rich data there and a lot of features. Um, so we will have that big Q&A at the end. Um, I know right now you're asking yourself, what am I going to do with all this free time I have? And how do I switch is the big question. So switching to focus. Oh, I'm just going to catch up with you there. So we've shown you how rich feature farm focus is and how the workflow can make you more efficient. So it begs the question again, how to focus. It is uh, switch to focus. It is super easy. Um, you can just do it yourself. It's a, it's a very super fast process. So we have uh, been asking our clients who have already switched over and there have been thousands of them already. How long did it take? And averagely, on average, between one and 10 minutes, which is really is a fast process. And these are people that have had data for up to 40 years, 30, 20 years, and they're bringing that over. Um, no additional cost, absolutely no additional cost, um, and all your codes and transactions and history do move across with you. Your bank and supplier feeds will also continue, and as usual, we are here to support you. We actually have a page dedicated to switching for switch information, switch to focus.co.nz, which we'll show you now. Um, so that's switch to focus.co.nz. If you go to this page, you will be able to see all the information that you need. Um, we'll start at the top there. Thanks, Craig. Coming on down, so these three videos, these will really familiarize yourself with, um, be able to familiarize yourself with farm focus be before you make that switch. Um, what you need to do, um, here's a re reiterate of, of exactly all that all that rich data that is going to move across because I know one of the things you're asking is oh, I've been here for a really long time I'm rural I'm really worried about my data coming across we understand that completely it will all come across um, for you we've got it there um, you can see the four steps to switch uh, switch across um, if you just work your way through those really nice and easy and then of course right at the bottom is switch now and when you when you click that switch now button, um, it will take you to a login screen that you just log in. There's lots of, um, if you've got more questions, we have an uh, amazing help center that you can go to as well. Just click on one of those. We've got lots of webinars and I'll talk a little bit about that as well shortly. Um, 
Um, oh, actually, another thing you should probably know is that your subscription, it might be a question that comes up, your subscription that you already have in rule when you come across to Farm Focus, you keep that same anniversary date, nothing changes there. Um, so you might also be asking when is a good time to switch, so if you've got that switch button in front of you, you can push it right now. <laughs> the time is now, um, we are saying don't wait until the end of the financial year, it is much better for you to make that change now while you're in this current and before the end of the financial year, it will bring all that data over for you, your accountant will love you for it because they will um, if you haven't been to one of our accountant webinars, um, we have some great um, plugins there for them as well that they can use and download that rich data for you that they won't have unless you've already made that switch. Um, so we are really confident that you should make that switch now and I know that I can go on about making the switch now. Um, I'm passionate about it and we're all passionate about it and we know we are ready and we are ready for you but rather than just hearing me say it, um, we did go out and we asked a few of our clients um, if they could um, if they could make some comfort to you or those last people that haven't actually switched over yet, um, one of these piece, people was Lisa Stevenson. She lives down the road here in Master and she did a great little video for us. So we'd like to play that to you now. Thanks, Craig. Hi, I'm Lisa Stevenson. I live here with my family at Kokotau. We contract milk on this farm, which is a thousand cows, as well as north of Masterton at Ringatumau, which is 500. And within the office and in the home environment, when I'm doing the accounts and GST returns, we use Farm Focus. When I first started using it, I rung the Farm Focus team and they used TeamViewer to plug into my computer and over the phone we could just chat, they could show me via the screen and me watching how, how to do everything and that was just brilliant. I think Farm Focus, over the four years that we've been with them, they are constantly evolving and developing new things within Farm Focus to make it better. And it's better than, I believe, a lot of other systems purely because it is so farm focused, really. All the codes are set up there for you. The people in the office know about farming, so it's easy to chat to them about what's happening and, and they know what certain things are in transactions, so they know how to code things as well. So from what I've seen of other products, Farm Focus offers just as much, if not more, particularly from a farming sense anyway. Huge thank you to Lisa um, for making that video for us. That was great um, to hear from somebody else. And you, if you know Lisa, um, also in our brand story video that we showed you earlier, her whole family was in our, in, in our brand story as well, which is great. We love our farmers, so that's awesome. Um, so many of you, um, some of so some of you that are already on here on our webinar today have probably already made the switch. Um, I can't see you, but if you have made the switch, put your hand up. Okay, I'm going to just assume some of you put your hand up because I would like to say congratulations. Next slide, please, Craig. Um, we, are, um, we are so grateful for those people that are early adopters um, to Farm Focus because honestly, we do understand how cautious you are. Um, how that rich data that you've already got in rural, you need to bring it across to Farm Focus. What if I lose it? Where it's going to go? What about my timing? There's so many questions and so many um, so many questions that you'll have and, and reasons for you not to switch over. Um, we are here today to, uh, to really give you confidence that it is time to switch, um, but those that have already switched, we want to say thank you because you have made that um, decision and you have done it on your own, so thank you. And we will be sending you out this um, great jacket. It's a farm focus wet weather jacket. Um, we've actually created this jacket in conjunction with another great New Zealand company, Better craft who are not far down the um, North Island of where close to where we are. Um, we've made it and um, with the thought of our hardworking farmers in mind. You've got some great, there's some great um, rubber bits around the um, around your wrists and great coverage. Um, it's nice and warm, <laughs> so it's a great uh, jacket. And I know that you will love it, and it will also be arriving in a sustainable and recyclable box, a gift box that you can reuse again, which I think is also really important. We believe in the sustainability here at, at Farm Focus. So thank you for those that are 
early adopters. And for those that are going, damn, I wish I had a switch and got that jacket already, we do have enough jackets for about a third of our customers. So I can guarantee if you do switch in the next few weeks, um, you will also be receiving one of these jackets in the mail. I should also tell you that the jacket won't be arriving in the mail until winter time when you need it, which is around June, um, but we will be sending you a voucher to make sure that you um, actually receive that jacket and we'll need to know all your sizing and everything. So that's, uh, again, a huge thank you to our farmers for your support. We really do um, mean it and thank you. Let's move on to our next slide. Thanks, Craig. So over the years, we've uh, built up a great reputation for our customer service. I know a lot of you have already used our legendary customer service people just out here to the left of me. Um, but we're here for you whenever the, uh, you need us in the future as well. Um, you can just grab the phone um, and chat one-on-one -on -one at any time. You saw that Lisa had that, she needed that extra help when she moved over. Many of our customers haven't needed any extra help, um, but it is there for you, um, of course, um, moving on to the next slide. Thanks, Craig. Um, we're growing an ever, well, it's an ever growing library of educational training calls, um, tools that Juliet's are very much involved in. Um, again, we're so grateful to have Juliet involved coming from that banking sector and understanding the farming community and the farming itself. Um, we're creating tools for you, um, understanding you, and they are up on our help center. They're also going to be up on our website shortly as well. And you can go to our YouTube. Um, if you would rather do that rather than picking up the phone. Um, Julie also touched on our product development. Yes, we are making enhancements between four and six weeks. Um, they are getting loaded up into the cloud, into Farm Focus, so they do arrive seamlessly. You don't even realise that they are happening. We have a great feedback tool within Farm Focus, and we are asking you as our clients, um, what do you want to see next? What will help you um, to move um, on as you grow your business. So whenever you give us that feedback, we do uh, look at that feedback in our meetings to understand what we will be, we will, where we will be going next. Um, as a technology company, it's really important for us to be looking ahead. We're looking at the next thing that farmers are about to grab onto. Um, so that's important for us as well. We want to listen to you and what, what you're after. We have a certification and accreditation programs um, for our bankers and our consultants um, and our accountants, um, which are really important as well for us. We see um, where, where you farmers are at the heart of our business, absolutely, but it's a collaboration. So we need your accountants and your um, bankers and consultants behind us and with you. We put you at the centre, but they really are um, around us as one. A collaboration is really important. We get the most out of it. Um, and we want to make sure that you get the most out of Farm Focus. Um, some more feedback that we had from people using rural, that they were very comfortable using 25% of it or 50 or 70% of it, but there were some bits there that they really didn't understand um, or didn't even know existed. We don't want that to happen in Farm Focus. We've, we've created this automation for you really to free up that time so you can do more of what you like, um, and that's important. So we want you to take advantage of it. It would be really easy for you to switch over to Focus and then um, just use it as you did with Rural and you're downloading your CSV files and you're very comfortable. You can use it in that way, but we, we really urge you to um, take up the rich features that we really have put into uh, the time and money into Farm Focus and freeing up that time. So I'm going to leave you with um, the question of when you are going to uh, switch over. Our advice, as I said earlier, is before the financial year. Um, but I know you might have some nigglies in there and we don't want you to leave going, oh, I wish I had asked or I'm still worried about. Let's go straight into our Q&A. We've got Juliet and Craig here as well. And if you just want to type in that chat, any questions that you have, um, we are more than um, grateful for your questions so that we can answer them. glasses on for the questions. <laughs> Fire away. What about the wage book module? Thank you, Paulette. Hi, Paulette. Yes, yeah, so the wage book, we haven't brought that over from rural. Um, the main reason is just legislation and regulations. We can't really um, be experts in that field. So that's why we are integrating with these payroll providers. We've got pay source at the moment. We are getting Crystal Payroll on board pretty soon and we're working with others as well. 
It's a good thing to understand, Paulette, um, that we are always working with more integrations. We're out there. Um, the people that do it the best, we're grabbing them. They're the ones that we want to integrate with. So Helen's asking, when you say switch by end of financial year, is that March, May 2021 or March, May 2020? So the end of this year, Helen, um, 2021. So, yeah, we're saying a lot of our customers, dairy or sheep and beef mostly, have a May um, or June balance date. So we're saying that it's best to do it before the end of financial year. Um, the reason for that is that when you switch, you'll bring across two years of full tra transactional detail with you and historical information to that will come across in your um, trends report. So you'll get all of that rich information um, if you switch just before the end of financial year or a bit before the end of financial year, you'll have two full financial years with you to start fresh your next financial year. And your accountant will love you for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Helen. Any more questions? Or are you all ready to switch? One. Oh, here we are. Great. Heather. Dairy grazers. We are dairy grazers and just wondering about invoicing and farm focus. Had looked early to move over, but got told there was no invoicing and previous ones will not come over. We have some great invoicing yes. available. I'll actually, I'll just get Craig to jump us back into, um, into focus. We'll come back to the questions in a second. Always best to see it live, see it working. Yep, so we'll go into our invoicing um, and the actuals and the needs action. So you'll see up the top here, we've got those two tabs and we've got tax invoices. Uh, up the, and we can create a tax invoice. So in here, you'll put in your information, other party, reference, et cetera. I'll just get Craig to type in an example, say just pick whoever there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> don't worry too much about a reference, yeah. whatever. Um, and say that we are selling some supplements or... Not good options, good. <laughs> and you can enter in the description, the quantity multiplier unit price. You can start filling this out um, GST exclusive or inclusive, depending on how you want to work. Um, and then generate the invoice here. So this meets all of the uh, compliance and regulations with how it's set out. So full address, details, IRD numbers, due date, issue date, uh, banking down the bottom, how to pay. You'd see there as well, if we just cancel out of that, Craig, in the top corner there's a settings, um, a settings icon, not in this one. Oh, if we just go out of here, you can see at the top tab we've got tax invoices, into the tax invoices tab, Craig. Yeah, and so this is where anything that we have created ourselves will sit. Um, and then we also can show any deleted ones by setting that little toggle at the top. Um, so any ones that you might have created, but they were wrong and you deleted them, but maybe you want to refer back to them later on, you can just slide that toggle across and show any of the deleted ones. Within this tax invoices section as well, you've got the settings. And this is where you can go to personalise your tax invoice. So you can put your logo in there and you can create, if we just scroll down a little bit, Craig, you can create a message, a personalised message for your customers here as well. And that will appear on your invoices. We'll just cancel out of that and we'll just pop back to questions. All right. All right. Uh, what about oh, the invoicing? So if you switch, can you still access Cash Manager? Yes, you can on a read-only basis. So anything you do change in Cash Manager rural after you switch won't be switched. That change won't come across in focus. Um, but you can still go in and download any information that you want to keep. We recommend that you download your accountant's annual reports, and we've got some help centre topics on how to do this. It's really easy. Um, but that holds all of your information on a transactional level basis. So all of those notes and quantities and descriptions, all of those will be saved down in those reports if you want to keep those. 
Brenda, what happens to invoices that, that come, come on paper? paper? This is a great question. Thanks, Brenda. Yeah, so there are still a few suppliers out there that will send a paper invoice in the mail. You can take a photo of that and then forward that through to the invoice scanner. Um, there are quite a few apps that you can use that are free that, create, that will turn that photo into a PDF for you. Um, and so that's an easy way to send it through. Other than that, you can scan it yourself and then send it through. Um, we will just scroll back up. Yeah. <laughs> Balances brought forward on debtors. So that is where when something's partially paid or still unpaid, it will sit there in your invoices section and you'll be able to see the remaining balance there. Can the baseline be plan be worked on and saved as you go without being locked down? So the point of the baseline plan mail is that it is locked and you can't adjust mm -hmm. it, but you'll still be in your working plan and that's the one that you can adjust as you go and then you can save another version of the baseline. Mm -hmm. um, you can have as many versions of the baseline as you want. So you can have, like I mentioned, right at the start of the financial year, you'll set out your budget for the year, you save that down, and then three months in of actuals, and then the revised view, view out from there, you can save another one down. Um, so it'll have the actuals for the three months and nine months forecast. Another one at six months, nine months, 12 months. Um, yeah. So Brenda, Brenda, do you add them manually? So that's the invoices. So you can add them manually, the invoices, but like I said, uh, it's easier just to take a picture of them and um, email that through. Yeah. You can still email those ones, Brenda, to the unique email address. So just email it to Farm Focus and it will still read that data even though you've scanned it, taken a photo of it or turned it into a PDF. Either or, it'll still come through to Farm Focus and our machine learning technology will read that invoice and bring it into Farm Focus. So Heather's asking, can you still put a second line on your cash flow? Yes, you can. Um, there is a split view function um, at the top of the page that you can press and you can select what, what you want to be in line one and line two of that cash flow. So you can compare directly with what you did last year, what your plan was underneath your actuals, that sort of thing. Or like the baseline yeah. takes days to complete. That's a good question, Mel. What if the baseline takes days to complete? Well, what it is, is if you're putting your budget into the working plan, that's mm -hmm. fine. Just wait till you've completed it mm -hmm. and then lock a baseline. Yep. Yeah. What happens when you lose internet connection? Do you lose data? So if you're losing connection, when you're in your invoices or your transactions, you'll see that a lot of those have a save button for when you're coding. So make sure you are clicking save on those. When you're in your cash flow, whenever you've typed in something, it will save. You don't need to click save and save and save when, as you're going. As soon as you've typed it in, it's in there. That's, that's where it is. Um, and if you lose internet connection, it'll bring you back to where you left off. Thanks, Paulette. Any more questions? One thing um, that we've had a lot of questions about is enterprises and rural and what that looks like in Farm Focus. So I'll just take you back into the demo. So when you come across from rural, if you've got enterprises set up in rural, they will come across as what we call management tags. And as you do your switch, you'll be prompted to go through all these and set them up. So when you go into tags, your enterprises will come through and populate in here for you to make them a management tag or a cost tag. So management tags are for different businesses that are operating under the same GST number and they are revenue and expense generating businesses. So you see here we've got the Earthworks contracting business set up. This means anytime I'm budgeting or coding, I can tag that um, management tag to any of those payments. And at the end of the reporting, I can split that out to see how much that business, the efficiency of that business separate to the main business. Um, we've also got these cost tags here now. These are new. We can track projects with these. These are cost only tracking. So really handy for using if you're doing um, a new build or a new project or you're doing a new cropping trial and you just want to pull out those particular costs to do a cost-benefit analysis later on. 
Um, and you can also attribute these cost tags to a particular business as well. So if we just see here, Craig, um, if you just pull that project one up, you just drag and drop it underneath the management tag where it's applicable. So for this one, we'll be tracking that project that relates to that business. Yeah. Great. These, these tags are also great when you're coding. You can also code in your tags as well. So they're there, they're completely there and automated every time you bring in that invoice, that tag will be there alongside it as well, which is great. I'll just flip back into the questions. Might have to scroll back up a bit. Um, uh, oh, yeah. oh, Amanda, are you going to be able to export the cash flow to Excel? Not at this stage, but we are actually um, considering that we had it from a few people mm. that they want that function, but I guess we want to understand what you use that for. Um, if you could elaborate on why you like that to be in Excel. <laughs> Waiting for you, Amanda. <laughs> These are great questions, by the way. Please keep them coming. Send it out to your client. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Is that so then they can they can um, make alterations? Mm -hmm. Could they not be users on the same business so that they can go in and make changes in farm focus? Or do you like them to have their own version of it? As Juliet just pointed out, oh, via internet banking, many are oh, annually and via internet banking. Oh, the subscription. Okay, that's fine. Just Amanda, um, just on a, a note on that, as Juliet just said, we have had a few people ask about cash flow to Excel, um, and I talked about that feedback form earlier within um, Farm Focus. Uh, we yeah. really rely on you to actually be asking us what you, um, to letting us know what you actually do need next because the more people that ask for that, the higher up the list it goes and we really do look at that and make them a feature and an added bonus for you uh, as we move on. So Amanda said we are a forestry business and have a lot of shareholders. So, yeah, that's yeah, very relevant. Yeah, yeah. So we'll take that bad, yeah, like Katrina said, it's something that we've been um, asked about, so we'll be definitely looking into that. Um, can the build. subscription be paid in the same way we currently do annually and via internet banking? When you come across, mm. um, you'll be asked to put in some billing details. And that it won't get charged until your renewal date, but um, that is credit card or direct banking. Yeah. So internet banking, credit card. And as Juliet just said, whatever subscription you've got on and your date for rule will come across for exactly the same anniversary date and farm focus as well. So Paulette's asked, do you still have the front page graphs? Yes, we do. Uh, we'll just take you quickly into farm focus and show you our dashboard. So if this is the first screen you'll see whenever you log in. And we'll just go in. Just to scroll up to the top of the dashboard. So this is, yeah. Basically, your landing page anytime you log in for a new session. Um, it's just taking a little while to load, but here we see we've got the cash flow tracker. Um, it grays out at the very bottom of where your overdraft limit is set, and it gives you where that zero line is and where you're tracking throughout the year, and that red line is where we are up to within the year. If you just scroll down a little bit, Craig, you can see your bank balances. So all of your bank accounts that you've got, They'll be all sitting here and showing where the balance is at and also just prompting you again with where your overdraft limit is at. Um, invoices, so here you can see anything that's overdue, anything that's coming up, um, anything that's current that needs to be looked at. Um, and these little tabs as well, the balancing the view actuals, they'll take you straight to that screen to address those issues if you need to. And then further down the bottom, We've got our pie charts of the money earned and our money spent all shown here proportionately. And you can click into each section to get further, further information. Um, and can also change those for different years as well. So we do still have that page. Yeah. 
All right, that's questions. Just down a bit further. What about regular transactions? So if you have regular transactions, um, you would just set up a coding rule for that to deal with those same ones that keep coming through to be auto-coded when it's come through. Um, if you have regular transactions that you are billing for, um, so say you rent out a spare house on the farm, you can set up an invoice and you can set that up on a repeating basis so that will just populate in your invoices side to match your transaction to. Can you still pay through farmlands on the beef sales? What happened? So, can you still pay through farmland? So, Paulette and Heather are both asking. That. Oh no, Heather is asking. Um, I'm not entirely sure what you mean. <laughs> Do you mean you're paying not through your banking or not through here? Oops, farmlands with subscription. Oh, I don't. So I think no. We, so we are still through farmers, aren't um, we? Oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> I'll come back to you on Heather, that. We're not sure. Heather. <laughs> it's the first one we don't know the answer to. Sorry, Heather. We'll certainly come back to um, whether you can pay your subscription through farmlands. We're not hundred. I'm pretty sure, sure you can. I know with rural that we're yeah. still on their website, so. So on the beef sales, what happens when you sell both live weight? Door cattle and carcass works with reporting. Um, so when you're, if they're going through in the same, yeah, I think what you mean, do you just set your default to carcass weight or live weight? And in that instance, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, if you're selling store cattle, you'll be selling them probably through a different portal than the works cattle and you will just set against that stock class when you are doing your different lines you'll do so many beef sales live weight with whatever price per head or per kilo they were live weight and when you do your carcass weight line it'll be a separate line you can do that carcass weight per kilo or per head or whatever it was Does so you just split those out yeah Does that answer your question Heather hopefully Brenda, does your program meet IRD requirements for storing services? We are working through that process right now with IRD, so it will do. How does stock, how does stock reconciliation? Did you push enter? Work. <laughs> awesome. Um, in that livestock tab, so we'll just we'll jump back in again. Oh, can you just, sorry, just quickly say what that question was? I think it was a follow-up to that. Right. Yes, oh. Judy, sorry, I'll just finish that question. You can manually adjust live weight or carcass weight regardless of what the default is, but the default you just set to what you most regularly use, I guess. Good question, Judy. And then it will auto-calculate that yield for you in your um, livestock trading reports that we looked at earlier. Um, so livestock, we'll go into the plan and into livestock. So here you can see if we just drop down all the categories, we've got um, each, each livestock class there and we go down one further, you can see sales, purchases, all of the different events. Um, we've got our opening numbers. We'll just close those back up to two chevrons, please, Craig. Uh, so you can see all of your opening down the side, all of the events that happen throughout the year. So these are actual events that have actually happened. That grey column in the middle is what we've got on hand. And then at the end of the year, you can see your closing total and the opening for New Year. So that will be, like I showed you in the stock codes before, uh, what they automatically will age up to so that you know that the ageing up process is happening properly um, and it's all streamlined, ready for the new year to start your new year. If you look down at the bottom, you've got your total stock units along the bottom. So you've got your opening and closing stock units. You can see here that we're not really changing too many stock units throughout the year. Um, you can set your opening 
numbers here in the settings. If they, well, they'll come across from rural, but if you need to change them, you go up to the settings, please, Craig. And livestock. And you can set your opening numbers here. So you can overtype these if they haven't, well, they will have come through correctly from what you had in rural, but if there's some mistakes that have happened, um, you can overtype these here. So we'll just cancel out of that. You've done a good job, Craig. All right, do we have any other questions? You're all ready to switch. <laughs> Hopefully this demonstration has given you a little bit more comfort and familiarity around farm focus. Um, like I said before, we've got a lot of support available to help if there's any questions that you have. Um, yeah. Is that it? When is the last date to switch? <laughs> uh, a good we will be closing off rural at the end of this calendar year. Yeah. Yes, this webinar recording will be available. Yeah, it was Thanks, a lot, lot. Yeah, a lot of information to take in. We understand, um, so you will want to see this again. But as Juliet just said, we do have a lot of support available for you as well. Um, I missed the start of this video. Yeah, are there any any last questions while we've got Juliet standing here with us? Otherwise, we will move on. What happens with your data if you leave Cash Manager? So once you leave Cash Manager, that's to another provider. Um, so if your subscription to Cash Manager is no longer active, that information, well, you won't have access to it. So that's where we say it's really good to download those accountants annual report um, and that bring, you'll be able to store all of your information from each financial year that way. I guess it's just like any subscription if you... Stop the subscription. Yep, download your data first, always important. You certainly never lose any data with farm focus in the cloud, high security technology. So 30 seconds, count down for the last few questions. If there are any more, some of them might be typing very slowly. But we will give you um, a few more seconds. All right, something might pop up. Thank you, Juliet. Thank really you. Really appreciate all that knowledge. That's great. Um, as we said before, I know we've said it a few times, our support team really are there for you. Um, we certainly understand that you are having, um, there might be some nigglies there and some a few other questions. You might not have wanted to even ask them here in the chat. So um, please talk to our support team. They are there for you. Um, you listened to Lisa Stevenson's video earlier on. Um, she had to be held, uh, her hand held a little bit when she moved over. We're quite prepared to help you do that, whatever we need to answer those questions and to help you with that move. Um, we can even schedule you in. You can ring us up and say, look, I want to switch over at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, but can someone be on standby? Absolutely, we can be on standby for you there, um, whatever you need. Um, and of course, there's those jackets there as well. Let me remind you, they are great jackets. Um, only a third of our clients will end up getting them. And again, if you are already uh, switched over to Farm Focus, thank you, we appreciate it. Um, so just to finish off, another huge thank you. Ara Rural, Cash Manager Rural, you have been our Cash Manager Rural clients for some time and um, we really um, appreciate that. So thank you very much for your time here today. Thanks. If you need any more information, please visit our Help Centre or use the chat bubble to talk to the team.